welcome to the Toronto um, PTL Open, uh, the Prototype Toronto League Open, that is, uh, 2018. And uh, here we are um, about to start with the round four match. We've got Greg Chandler Burns uh, on one side here playing a scum and villainy list. That's Kath Scarlet and a whole bunch of Jakku Gunrunners. And Mike Kasinick over here on the Galactic Empire side with uh, Hal Runner, Del Mico, Valen Rudor, and a bunch of Black Squadron aces all using Juke. Uh, so this should be a really interesting match. Yes, absolutely. I think it will be. We were saying how um, we enjoy uh, the Prototype Toronto League so much because of how it lets us uh, come up with all these crazy lists. Mm -hmm. um, so why don't you tell us a bit about how the league works in general, Samit? Sure. The league in general is uh, it, it developed from a desire for people wanting to pl play against and play with ships that they didn't normally use all the time. So we're seven years, uh, sorry, seven matches in a season, and mm -hmm. the idea is that you can you can use any faction you want, and the rules are basic list building, but you cannot repeat any named pilots, so you can't fly the same pilot twice, so uh, this came back out in 1.0 when a lot of the players in the scene were tired of fighting against Dash Corins, and mm -hmm. you couldn't fly Dash Corins <laughs> seven times, you could only face him once, and uh, from that it's developed into more of a, a flavor or a style of play, or a, almost like a social mm -hmm. identity, basically. We're all about flying weird, fun, jank, interesting stuff that you're trying out for the first time, or that might work together or have a very strange interaction, and uh, uh, basically embrace the craziness of it. Yeah, and uh, the the general motto of the league is fly casual, right? Yeah. We've taken that, to, taken that to heart, so um, the basic idea is, um, and the basic feeling from all the players, is that we're here to, you know, have fun and do some crazy stuff, right? Absolutely. So sometimes, yeah, you'll get people playing top top of the meta lists, but we'll also find people playing uh, Jakku Gunrunner Swarms, yeah. um, for example. Actually, uh, you can see right there, Mike just got it in his hand. He just put it back down right there. That's actually last one of last year's uh, participation, not participation prizes, but one of the table prizes. Oh, right. Uh, he got that from last year's Open, where uh, I think you we randomly go out and give prizes out every single round to people who are playing. Yep, yep. And you can pick from a prize table, and that was one of the prizes that was available, and that was painted in the uh, PTL colors. Right. Uh, and so for those of you who don't know, this is the second PTL Open, uh, and uh, today is the second day of the PTL Open. Uh, it's a two-day tournament. We've got six rounds of Swiss plus a top cut. And um, over those six rounds, we encourage players not to just bring one wacky list, but three. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, you're actually bringing three lists and encouraged to play each of them twice during the Swiss. If you do that, you get um, yourselves uh, some extra prizes, an extra match point, um, and uh, it, keeps, it keeps things fresh. Yeah, absolutely. Because, you know, the idea is it, we have... Um we have competitive rules and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but we're also, as you were saying, the whole point behind the league is flying casual, so you know you want to be able to play different things. You don't always want to be stuck playing the same meta list. Maybe yep. you can bring one really good list and two fun ones and play it out, and it's just an idea of having a good idea. And as we were saying, we were talking about very interesting lists. Is um, These are some interesting lists. So yeah. Greg, uh, Greg out of the GRX crew, Grand River X-Wing, he's uh, rocking something very interesting. And, and last round, you were, you've got some experience with Kath, right? Um, a little bit. I've tried flying Kath in a couple lists, and it's um, not. It, it hasn't gone well for me. Okay. Um, but I wasn't flying Gunrunners. Um, I, I feel like actually a whole bunch of quad jumpers is going to be a great option. Now, um, Kath's ability is dependent on how many friends she's got with her, right? Uh, so, Kath's ability is, oh, what is it? It is if you are shooting someone who is bumped into a non-limited ship, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so, any generic, basically. Yeah, if you're shooting, yeah. So, the new word in 2.0 is non-limited, ah. right? Um, that is the technical for, uh, technical thing here. Hold on, I'll just pull up her exact the exact wording on her card. Uh, Kath. So, while you perform a primary attack, if there's at least one friendly non-limited ship at range zero of the defender, roll one additional attack oh. die. So the idea is, you move these quad jumpers into the into the match. Yeah. Uh, tractor, tractor your opponents such that they'll run into other quad jumpers, mm -hmm. and then Kath comes in with a shot rolling the extra attack die. Okay. Um, so uh, it sounds like a great combo, and I think it's going to be uh, really good. Um, chances are what he's going to do here is bring Kath up behind the rest of the quad jumpers right. and just slowly slowly keep him behind while they um, cause trouble for the swarm. And that, that could be a problem for Mike's um, swarm, considering that if you start pulling the, if you start pushing and pulling your yep. swarm out of place, your maneuvers mm -hmm. start to break down. And uh, swarms are generally all about specific flying and specific movers and yep. formations and barrel rolling at the right time to make space for another ship and all this other stuff. And when you start not being able to 
prepare for that because your ships are all tractor beamed out of the way into weird positions, it could mess with your setup. Yeah, that's going to be a real uh, problem, I think, for for the TIE Swarm. Um, if I were Mike, I would. I don't have much experience flying TIE Swarms at all. I've Me never fly, flown Imperials. But what I would consider doing is abandoning my formation now. Um, because it's going to get screwy very quick with these Gunrunners. Mm -hmm. They move first. They've got their um, Space Tug Tractor Array ability, which lets them tractor someone as an action during the their activation. Uh, so um, very quickly, this Swarm's uh, formation is going to fall apart. Yeah. Uh, so I would consider, uh, if I were Mike, to uh, I would consider spreading out entirely and coming at him from different angles, um, such that any one particular uh, someone being tractored in any one particular direction is not going to be a huge issue. I think with him having Howl Runner in that swarm, though, that's yeah, that's why... the issue, I guess. Um, Howl Runner is so important. That being said, these guys are still going to be pretty effective. They are a Juke Swarm overall, right? Mm -hmm. um, so each and every one of these uh, the, um, is still going to be able to push some damage through, even without that reroll, right? That um, uh, Juke should help them manage to get those, get that damage through, right? And Del Miko is a, a new ship for second edition, which right. has, got a, it's, has added an extra little bit of mm. uh, buffing to the Tide Swarms now. So right. now with this, with the two in the back there, with Del and Howl Runner being in the back, um, Howl Runner obviously offensive rerolls for anybody at range zero to one, mm -hmm. but Del Miko's ability, in case you're not 100 uh, percent familiar with it, because I have to just look it up because I don't fly twice. Right. Yeah. But any ship at range zero to two defends against a damaged attacker. The defender may reroll one defense die. Right. So that's actually really really interesting. So mm -hmm. giving the really being able to leverage those two abilities is where the strength of this specific yeah. swarm come from. And as we saw in yesterday's um, quadruple phantom juke list, juke's really good. Yes. It's even better imagine. when you've got more than three of them. Mm -hmm. When you've got six of them, like there's on Mike's side, it's it's downright nasty. Yeah. You just grind your opponent into dust where you could actually really do something with those two attack dice. <laughs> uh, Mars uh, Mike Beard says, damaged attacker is literally the definition of a quad jumper. And I was just about to say, actually, um, Del Mico is going to be great against uh, Greg's list here because of the... Um, uh, the fact that the Gunrunners have no shields, right? Yes. As soon as they take one damage, Del Miko's ability is going to start working. Uh, there it is up on the screen. Uh, thank you. Um, if you folks in the chat need any of us uh, need us to bring up any cards, by the way, uh, like that, let us know and we can make it happen. Um, so, um, yeah, they're going to take damage cards really quickly, which mm -hmm. means they will be damaged by definition. Mm -hmm. uh, and so Del Miko will start um, uh, taking effect. Uh, that said, um, they'll have to. Uh, the ties will have to dig into um, a couple shields on Kath for that ability to start working there. Now, if you're Mike, do you spread out the love so that you can activate Dell's ability on as many mm. targets as possible, or do you want to do the usual tried and true method of X-wing is focus fire? I mean, take take sh taping, yeah, taking ships off the board is always the best move, right? Mm -hmm. um, and especially these gun runners, because uh, the less tractor beams that can be flying around, the better. Um, so I'd still want to kill one, but hey, if you manage to uh, drop one on, um, or if you manage to, you know, have uh, just have a shot on one ship that That's you wouldn't true. normally have, then. Uh, <clears throat> uh, PT one hundred six commenting on the fact mm -hmm. that uh, the only issue with uh, Mike's list is that Juke is not free. Uh, you have to take the evade token to generate said juke. Yeah. Uh, but from what I've seen from a lot of uh, um, TIE Fighter players anyways, is that you're generally going to take the evade action anyways because yep. you want to keep them alive as long as possible. So I guess what Mike is assuming here is that it's just a natural action to be taking anyways with the Swarm. Yep. So that's why he, he thinks that that's going to work. And I can see what you're saying. Where, where juke is exceptionally powerful, again, we saw yesterday Defenders. on the Phantoms. Defenders and, and Phantoms. Phantoms. Any yep. ship that gets the juke without gets the evade for free, mm -hmm. essentially, mm -hmm. is where it's incredibly powerful. And considering I fly both those ships a lot, I can definitely say that's it's all included for me on every single list. Yeah, and it's not it's not so much a huge deal, I think, for the TIE Fighters, um, because, yeah, they'll evade every turn. They're only rolling two dice, so they don't need a focus as much. Mm -hmm. um, and, Especially with Howl Runner. And Howl Runner's there to force them to re-roll. Yeah. Uh, so um, there's still a good chance that they're rolling one or two hits every turn, mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully Juke will help them push that through. 
<laughs> Juke should be more expensive on Phantoms and Defenders. That's the general... This is uh, one of the people in chat here. This general feeling of them so far, but we want to make sure that we don't uh, price them out of existence. Uh, Bergs v... Uh, Bergsby 2012, the overlay is custom, exclusive to VTTV. This is the hard work that they put in to provide you with an exceptional looking overlay, and um, that's what they basically do. It's their pride and joy. Yeah, uh, special thanks, of course, from the PTL Open to the guys at VTTV. They're Absolutely. the ones who run, run all our streaming for all the tournaments here in Toronto, um, and they do a fantastic job. Of volunteering um, their time to provide us incredible quality content. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so if you guys want to go give VTTV a subscribe, like, follow, all that jazz on, on YouTube and Twitch, um, do it because uh, they have some great X-Wing content. Do it. Whose car is that? Yeah, we've got, I don't know if you guys can hear that. There's a little bit of a car car alarm going on. We apologize uh, about that. Hopefully that'll stop in a second. I'm actually not even <laughs> sure what my car alarm sounds like. Hold on. <laughs> Never triggered it before. Um, <clears throat> so I don't necessarily think that Juke is going to be the problem. I think uh, maybe, I don't know, do you think Phantoms and Defenders are, are overpriced or underpriced? or? Well... I mean, again, I, it's super biased considering that's like my two favorite ships in the Imperial faction yeah, yeah, to fly, yeah. <laughs> and the fact that I can fly two of them together effectively is is a dream for me. The defender is certainly not overcosted. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think I would not be saying that. I'm, I, even though it's my favorite ship in the game, I'm really glad you can't fly three of them in a yes, list because yeah. in 2.0, being able to fly three defenders would be absolutely oppressive yep. and no fun for anybody. They're yep. too good. Yep. Um, but they're worth their points, is what I would say. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you can still just, if you whiff, you whiff without a, some way of backing it up with different things. Just because you have tokens, the way that they've modified the way tokens work in this game, they sometimes just die. Yeah. Um, again, people are keep telling me that, you know, the Phantoms are under-costed because they're so much cheaper now. But they, you know, they used to rely entirely on absolute defense to yeah. get shot. Yeah. Now Phantoms rely on never being an arc. Yeah. They only have two evade dice no matter what you do, unless you're flying behind a debris or anything mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, there's no more there's no more cloaking before you get shot back. Um, yeah, which, with advanced cloaking devices no longer in the game, it's a much different type of like I will routinely just expect my ships to explode, and that's okay. But again, I could be biased, so could they are my favorite. I know so. someone's running a four uh, phantom list today or this weekend, I think, and uh, was having fun with it. Uh, let's yeah, we had that first game up on the stream. Oh, did we? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right, looks like a range three shot happening from uh, one of the TIE fighters, number six here, uh, one of our Black Squadron aces on one of the gun runners, and it looks like a whiff. <clears throat> um, so someone here is saying that 2E Phantoms are so much better than one edi first edition Phantoms, and uh, I wonder, I wonder how much, uh, uh, how much I agree. They are definitely different. The, yeah, I could see them being different. Whisper, um, like Whisper before, was almost unhittable, right? Mm -hmm. It was, you... You Until you caught her once and killed her. Yeah, you had to catch her once with a bump or a, uh, getting her on a rock or something like that. Yeah. Now um, you can actually hit her. Right? Yeah. Uh, so if you are, um, which makes them weaker in a way. Ooh, that's good. Someone Absolutely. just rolled five dice on defense. Um, uh, then there's a range three through the obstruction. Yeah, range three through the obstruction. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see a bunch of that, I feel like. Yeah. Um, so this was just the first round of range three pot shots. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see where this goes next. Um, I have a feeling these gu gun runners are going to um, zoom forward and start messing with... Uh, messing with Mike's squadron here. And I feel like that's when the wheels are going to fall off. It's all going to get very weird from that by. <clears throat> so, Mars Mike Beard says, uh, they're definitely, uh, Phantoms are definitely weaker in 2nd Edition, but they're also 500% better. So, and you know what? I agree with the first statement for sure. Definitely do agree with you they're weaker. And as I've been playing more and more with them, I, I think I am coming around to them better in this edition too. Yeah. I think I might enjoy them more now because... Because you expect them to blow up, you're a little less, oh no, my entire game is over because I just lost Whisper. Now it's like, okay, she took two damage, whatever. Yeah, and and I, I kind of like that a bit more. I think that's a general, the whole edition is like that. Yeah, now. yeah, everything is much more interesting to fly, Yeah, right? Um, I mean, T-65s are more interesting to fly just yeah. because now they have Talon rolls and they've got their servo motor S-foils and yeah. stuff like that. They've become more interesting. Uh, A-wings have become more interesting. Mm. B-wings have become more interesting. Phantoms now, uh, for example, have become more interesting um, because you actually have to be very careful with them, right? Um, 
I uh, I fly um, Star Vipers a lot. Yes, me too. I love um, those. And um, having the barrel roll built in makes them more interesting, right? But also, also not having access to auto thrusters makes them more interesting. As an ace player, it's yeah. a huge difference to finally see how old school players actually had to suffer before there was auto thrusters. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes sooner fell just dies at range three. It yeah, happens. Sometimes, right? Um, I've... Uh, uh, and, and with with like Guri mm -hmm. and Dalen, for example, uh, I found that like before I could get into range three and just be safe there, mm -hmm. right? Um, now I have to be more careful. I have to stay out of range three and then find my, find a way to get into range one the next round and be safe. Um, so there's a lot more in terms of interesting decisions to make, right? And I think that is the most brilliant thing about second edition is the, the removal of most of those completely passive mods, yes. right? Um, everything the things costs that you, something. Everything is a decision, is a choice, is yeah. an action. Yep. So everything matters, basically. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Except for Marauder. That yeah. one <laughs> title there um, always triggers and um, out the rear. I mean, it only works on uh, the rear arc, but it, it is very good. And I, I think undercosted. If we're, um, I think we were talking about that uh, off, before, camera, off yeah. camera or off, uh, off mic, I guess. Um, uh, Marauder is only three points and gives you a free reroll out the rear, uh, which is really good. Um, and couples with Cats in built ability too, I believe. Uh, Cats is a primary attack. Uh, can you bring up Cats Scarlet, please? Um, <clears throat> it's a when you were making a primary attack, I think out the rear as well. Um, uh, I don't think it specifies forward. So there you go. When primary you attack. Yeah, yeah, the rear arc is a primary attack. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so the um, the gun runners have moved. The tie swarms have uh, uh, tie swarm is coming in as well. So Mike said he's not scared of the debris because I guess it's just debris, so he doesn't have to worry about whether or not it's gonna. He'll still be able to fire through the debris. He'll still be able to do all that. I guess he won't be able to take uh, evade tokens for his juke action, but I guess he fi figures he's got enough ties to deal with it, and he's just gonna. If he Shove them down ring. Greg's throat. We'll yeah. see what happens. Um, and uh, taking, uh, if you've got Hell Runner there, you've still got the rerolls. That's true. You're right. Exactly. And that's the power of I the mean, swarm. <clears throat> it's really good. Um, I, I, I actually find the Inferno Squadron setup uh, to be quite um, intimidating. Yeah, um, I would. Hell Runner, Del Mico, uh, Aiden, yep. something or other. There's a couple uh, of other ones. <clears throat> et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> um, uh, Mars uh, Mike Beard says uh, that he's been trying to figure out how to build Cath with a feedback static discharge freighter captain. Well, freighter captain's the 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 um, what's the word? I have no idea. Uh, it's the Falcon, right? It's, oh, it's, it's the Scum Falcon generic. Oh, I haven't um, even opened mine yet. <laughs> Uh, you should. It's, yeah, got Han, it's got Han Gunner in there. Yeah, and, before it goes up to a hundred points. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> um, um See, uh, so I actually tried to build something uh, very similar, not um, not feedback or, or sorry, not a freighter captain, but a couple of um, Z ninety fives to go with Cath, uh, which could be a lot of fun, and I should try it again. Um, but I've actually uh, that list I ended up uh, tweaking. Um, I was trying to use Cath with a Z two Z ninety fives and a. Lock Revenant, that is the, the generic Scourge. Right. Uh, with triple zero on it and uh, a few other things. Um, Making sure nobody is ever going to miss uh, Howl Runner's Evade token. You can definitely tell. Oh, yeah. Just <laughs> I love those giant tokens. They're so a little I'm, obnoxious, but. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming Quadrupper 5 is going to face the brunt of the assault from this swarm now. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's going after 3 or 5 here. Mm -hmm. 3 is the one that is most likely unobstructed uh, from most of these ships. And the Hallrunner actually technically does work on herself now. Yes. Which is that, an amazing change. That looks like a hit crit. Yes, it does. From... Mike. Yeah. Representing Gong Squadron. That's three yep. uh, three evades, Juke, so we're good. That must have been another obstructed, obstructed shot. Range three. Uh, that must have been Hallrunner shot, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it looks like it was. And then... Now Del Mico's going to shoot. So that means that Mike has initiative. Yeah. And Kath will probably be able to target the lead tie. Yeah, it looks like they're attacking number three here. So I, th I have a feeling that um, number three is just going to end up off the board. <clears throat> Do -do -do. 
So as I was saying um, uh, regarding Kath, I found actually that I, I like Koska better, Koska Frost. Um, Kath's ability is actually really hard to trigger uh, to ensure that someone is bumping the target. Right. Uh, Koska's ability is uh, get rerolls when you're attacking someone who's stressed. Oh, okay, um, yes. <clears throat> And uh, you throw that in with Forlom and a Lock Revenant with triple zero on there, and you're just throwing stress all over the place. Three medium-based ships. It's actually a really neat list, um, which uh, had I been playing this weekend, I would have been flying. Mm. Um, but um, that's actually something I really enjoy about the um, the new Fire Spray, is that there's, what, five, six different I think there pilots? is there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of different pilots for that, which means it's going to show up in a lot of lists, which... Is great because it's a really iconic ship. Yes, and and mm. I, I I will never have an issue with seeing a ship that I grew up watching on movies and yeah. TV being good in a game called X Wing. Yeah, exactly. I don't exactly. care how many Bobas we have to see <laughs> or I have to fight against. I don't care. It's Boba. Let him I be mean, as good as he wants. He's good, right? But he, and supposedly it's a it's a meta list, Boba. Yeah, he's not unbeatable, but though. he's not unbeatable, right? right? And right. that's that's the thing. Um, we're finding a lot of good lists, but nothing that is unbeatable. Uh, nothing that is abusive or really like a negative play experience. So far, we've also only been in a one one month edition. There's yeah. The mad scientists haven't maybe had a chance to <laughs> lab it yet, but I think so I far. think that also uh, I think that's a big focus of this edition is to tend to remove all that stuff out of there. Mm -hmm. So 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 actually, so it looks like Greg got out of that in opening engagement, not taking any damage yet. We're still doing, I think, some of the black squadron shots. Yeah, actually, that's right because Mike would have just used Howl Runner and Dell. And now here comes the the next three salvo, and it looks like Kath was able to get one damage into that um, black squadron ace. Yeah, yeah. Number six, the lead one, the unobstructed shot. All right, so that's a hit focus. Uh, so one hit. One hit. There you go. Be a, he'll, there's nothing, nothing to juke, so he'll be taking that damage. Yep. Someone's soon to be damaged. Number three, I think, has taken a damage card. Yep. Yep. Or is that number five he's firing on? Uh, number five. Yeah, the lead one. Is it five or yeah. three? Hmm. Hard to tell from this angle. I think because that was the only one that would be accessible to all five, all six right. ships. Yes. He wanted yeah, to focus yeah. his fire. Yeah, yeah, that's true. One more hit from the Howl Runner. Well, so, the Howl Runner reroll, actually. And that's another... Another damage. Two damage. Does he spend his focus? Or does he have it? He does yeah. spend the focus. It takes zero damage. So Greg electing to keep is ships undamaged as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Now the cool thing is now all of these TIE fighters are going to actually get defensive rerolls whenever they're... Well, it's only against that one attack. Against there. the one, yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be... Uh, this is something I'm finding uh, in, in second edition. That first round, often very little happens. Mm. Um, the first round of shooting. Um, sometimes you manage to pull off that great little pot shot at range three, but um, uh, very... More likely, it's a whole bunch of whole bunch of nothing. Um, and oh, there's another two three more damage. There it looks like. Oh right? no, he's spending his focus oh, again. Oh, it's a different target. Yep. Hmm. So he's just stripping some focuses now. I think he's trying to spread his damage around so that Delmico will trigger. Yeah. Uh, more often. <clears throat> oh, it's a bunch of blanks. There's another hit. That Howl Runner reroll's been doing work. Absolutely. So one more damage through. Mm hmm. So it looks like we've got, what, is that 45 people watching us right now? Is that right? 71. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, what's the 45 number? Oh, uh, that only displays the Twitch viewership. It doesn't have the YouTube viewership. Right, okay. So we've got, we've got, we've got 70 folks uh, tuning in this morning, which thank is great. Thank you all very much for joining with us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, again, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is the PTL Open. Uh, that is the Prototype Toronto League uh, here in uh, downtown Toronto, Ontario. <clears throat> Two is enough. So this this might be a pretty uneventful round considering everybody's firing at range three. <clears throat> the pot shots, all these evade tokens yep. and all this other kind of stuff. We're firing through debris. <clears throat> it's actually the next round where things are going to get very interesting yep. for us, I think. Yep. Uh, this next round, uh, I have a feeling uh, like number three and five can just kind of do one forwards, and they're going to tug something maybe or tug tractor. something yeah. in random directions, right? Yeah. And this is the thing: uh, the tractor can push uh, either barrel roll or boost mm -hmm. the target ship, right? Um, <clears throat> which means Mike has to plan for the fact that he can go three different directions. Before number he five moves. and number six are going to be in a whole bunch of random places. Yep. 
Um, also, number two, uh, t- Space Tug 2 can do a three bank in and then tractor array hollow runner in a different direction. Yeah, that's breaking true. Breaking up the swarm. There's that's a lot true. that he can do now. This is going to be real problematic. I think Mike is just going to have to get used to the fact that his ships are going to be everywhere, places, and he's going to have to take what shots he can. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, cause so like number six, probably going on to that debris, right? Um, that would be my guess. Um, number five might get pushed. Uh, I would probably boost him forward right. actually, uh, so that he's flying past and separate him from the rest of the storm. Yeah. Separate him from the rest of the storm. So if I were Mike, I'd just dial in a, um, dial in a K turn maybe, mm. uh, at this point, um, for, for number five, uh, Hal Runner's number one, is that right? Yeah. Uh, so Hal Runner, who is in that bright, please target me paint job there, <laughs> um, is uh, probably going to get pulled towards the away from the rest of the swarm, right? So I would barrel roll him uh, towards our edge of our, yeah. our viewpoint here. Yeah. Um, and uh, that would be easy enough to pull off, I think, for all of these ships. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, Kath, probably just a one forward, I'd say. I think so. I mean, why Do not, the one right? forward and just let the swarm come to you here. And just um, start firing at something. You've got Fearless. And I forget the exact wording on Fearless. Can you pull up Fearless for us, please? Um, uh, it gives you the extra hit, I think it is. Yeah, it converts, mm-hmm. a, uh, it converts a blank to a hit. Yeah, there it is. As um, long as you're performing a primary attack and the defender is in, um, the defender's in your primary arc. Yeah, so if you're performing a entire... Uh, Oh, there it went away, and it was behind our. Um, it's it's the same thing it was in one point oh. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. You're, if you're attacking somebody in your primary primary arc, you add a hit result, and then um, you can only if they're in each other's. If you're in, if they're yeah. in your primary arc. Yeah, and just change any result to a hit, uh, yeah. which is wild. That's so good. Yeah. Um, barrel rolling five towards six may be better. Oh, good point. Um, so uh, someone says. Um, uh, well, you can't barrel sure. five towards six until six is out of the way. So you yeah. need to move them. You need to move six first, yeah. then five. Because I don't think right. I don't think six five can't complete that barrel towards six down board. No, I feel like um, I feel like it's a good idea to move the swarm, like just scatter that swarm. Right. Now, so Greg you can pick them off one at a time. Greg, Greg, uh, now mm-hmm. I'm forgive me. I'm, I think I'm. I know you can only do a straight boost maneuver. You can't do a yes, bank boost maneuver. You can maneuver. only do a straight. You can't you change the, the angle of a ship to do something really wonky. Yep. 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 Um, so I would probably pull five forward. Um, so to force it past, right. Um, that's probably what I would do. Six, I would move onto the debris, give him some stress before he moves, and then um, stress again if he moves through it, which he will. So he'll actually end up double stressed, right? Uh, because barrel rolling onto a debris counts as moving onto a debris. Oh, does it now yep. in 2.0? Yeah, barrel, oh, okay. rolling, barrel rolling and boost count as moving, and debris, it's whenever you move onto them, you take a stress. I see. And you, and you have to um, uh, roll for uh, the chance of taking a hit. So um, double stressing a tie fighter would be pretty clutch. I mean, yeah, that's that's going to be a tie fighter who's basically out of the game, right? Uh, okay, so number five here is moving forward. Ooh, an S loop. Interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe he's just going to block everything. Yeah, he's just going to block the whole swarm. How about that? Hmm. This is also kind of why I love to see interesting lists and different players because they sometimes do things that you wouldn't normally think about. They've, uh, yep. they've got reps with their list and they know how they want to operate with it and sometimes yep. you get to see some fun and interesting stuff. I haven't flown a quad jumper yet, but... Um, yeah, I've only flew them a couple of times in 1.0. You cannot barrel roll or boost with a normal barrel roll or boost action. That's considered a failure. Correct. That being said, the um, uh, someone asked that, uh, by the way, in the chat. Um, uh, that... Being said, um, the space tug tractor array allows you to do it specifically, yes. and it looks like this is what's happening here. Um, space tug is uh, is tractoring um, tie six tie six onto the debris the as you debris said field. to double stress it. Yeah, so he's going to take a stress when he lands on it. Now, then, when he moves forward and bumps into quad jumper number three, um, well, bumps or moves past, he's going to take another stress, right? Yeah, and unless he programmed a three straight or more, he's going to get blocked. And it's going to be a huge traffic collision. I think probably what Greg wants to do as well is limit the amount of evade actions that yeah. Mike's able to take this round. If he can potentially block most, if not all, of his ships, he might he might be able to get ahead by pulling one or two of them off yeah. the board. So let's see the roll for the debris. 
That is... A hit, so he's fine. Yep, just a regular hit. He's fine. He should take a stress token. There it is. Uh, and then when he moves, he's going to uh, um, take another stress token and roll again, uh, which is the, the, the grossness of all these quad jumpers. And this is probably why... Um, uh, why Greg brought debris, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why Mike brought debris, but I see why Greg brought <laughs> brought debris. Uh, oh, and it looks like Quad Jumper Two is going to bump into Tie Fighter Six. Yep, that's a bump for sure. So no action for Quad Jumper Number Two, which is actually a bit of a shame. Yeah. Um, because that tractor could have been uh, quite useful. I'm actually surprised he didn't two bank there instead of um, uh, instead of a hard two. Agree. That's what I. So I thought he would see maybe. Yeah, two bank and just get in there and get Howl Runner away from the rest of the swarm. But I think maybe it had to have been a three bank, which I'm not 100 percent sure the tra tractors can do. They might not have that maneuver. Yeah, two bank I think would have gotten him to range, but maybe not. Um, that's that's. Uh, it's always hard to see from our vantage point here. Mm -hmm. And we've got a one hard from the remaining quad jumper, which I also did not know it could do. Yeah, those things are. Uh, did he land on the debris? Looks like it. Yep. Nope. Oh, no, he no. did not. He cleared it, it looks like. Yeah, he just missed the debris. It's very... Um, just barely. <clears throat> so but now guess, we get to see the other uh, 401 traffic jam happen. I was now. expecting this whole swarm to be a lot more... Um, a lot more... Tugged, I guess. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so I think we're doing a... We're doing number six first. Who's doing what? A one forward? Pionator uh, quads do have a three bank. Thank you. Good to know. Oh, a one bank from quad can, number six. Quads can go everywhere and do everything, says <laughs> Mike Mark Beard. Mike Beard. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they are a great little ship, and a lot of people have a lot of love for them. So yeah. I, I have to admit, I do love the model. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great little ship. Mm -hmm. I mean, 28 points is, is aggressively costed considering the utility of it. So... It's cheaper than a base uh, Academy tie, and it mm -hmm. has a tractor beam action. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, yeah, Mark, Mark Beard. That's your new name. Sorry, Mars, Mike Beard. I apologize. <laughs> I have had coffee, but clearly not enough. Um, I don't know. They're interesting. I mean, there's by no stretch of the imagination would I ever say conceivably that Quad Jumper is overpowered or over anything. No. But they are really cheap they for will... what they can do, and you could just piled so many of them into a list and it's just obnoxious. They'll mess your shit, uh, mess yeah. your stuff, they mess your wreck, plan up They will wreck your day. Yeah, absolutely. Greg was saying <laughs> he has a version of a list up here of the open that's got seven of them in there. Seven yeah, Just seven quad jumpers. quad jumpers. That's Wait, too seven many. Work? They are 28 points. Um, yeah, can you fit seven? I don't Wait, know. I'm assuming you can because I failed math, so I'm assuming <laughs> you're right. Uh, yeah, that's 196. Um, so Mars, is, Mike, I'm assuming you're a fan of quad jumpers then. Best pilot next way. Um, so uh, that was an attempted move over the debris and another bump, uh, another roll, another stress. Yeah. Um, so TIE Fighter number six is basically kind of out of the fight for a while here. And He'll get a shot off at um, Kath, but uh, for the going to be part, in three arcs, though. And here comes the collision. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like Greg's really interesting two sloop is going to cause some problems as well because yeah. that's going to bump that Tie Fighter, I believe. Oh, that's so interesting. I would not have done that with with number five. But at still all. able to have arcs on uh, number six. I guess that's why he did it. Yeah. So number five here has got uh, so uh, Quad Jumper five can shoot Quad Jumper uh, Tie Fighter six, yeah. which is. Uh, very impressive, actually, to to get that um, shot. So actually, I'm curious if six is bumping Tie Fighter six is bumping uh, Quad Jumper three or four. I believe he's just blocking. Uh, he's um, touching three, three, right? Yeah. So both five and six or uh, five and four are going to get a shot Correct. at and that Tie Fighter. We also assume that Kath will also probably have a range when fearlessness shot on that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That Tie Fighter is going to die. Yes. Um, probably before he gets to shoot. Um, what is going on here? I think this, moving the, yeah, this yeah, this one's gonna be maybe go grab a drink, come back. This is gonna <laughs> be a bit of a movement. Anybody who's flown any swarms before know that once you start getting into the traffic jams, it's yeah, it's it's a bit of a, a meal of it to try to make all this work. Uh, you no, know, we have the, the 2.0 has a nice little lines along the back of the templates, mm -hmm. but there's still only so much you can do. Oh, looks, I see what's happening here. We've got a four, 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 four straight. Ah. Now that's an interesting move. We're just getting that TIE Fighter away from the swarm entirely. Mm -hmm. um, and no, it doesn't look like it was a K turn. I think it was a straight. Yeah, five straight looks yeah. like. 
and uh, getting him out there, which is great. Um, he's going to probably swing those TIE Fighters back around. Um, and this is what I was saying. Like, Mike can't rely on holding the swarm together. I think what he needs to do is... It looks like, was that a crit he took? Uh, or was it an eyeball? eyeball? It was eyeball. eyeball. Okay, so he's fine. So he's safe, but stressed again. Those stress are really going to be problematic. Yeah, because um, he's going to want to wheel around, but now he can't cater, and he yep. can't hard one. Oh, he'll, if he hard ones, he can't clear stress, can't barrel roll. Yeah. That's the real problem, problem with flying swarms, is they're likely to... Um, roll over those debris so deb debris are actually really bad for swarms i mm. think you want to keep them together but you have to pass yeah, them over sometimes debris, the swarm right? position is better than the stress you'd rather take a damage potentially than yeah have a and have your position the way you need it yep. than just that stress token yep. that can might mess up your day <clears throat> now we're um, gonna probably we're probably gonna see some ships off the board this turn oh uh yeah Qua uh, tie fighter six is going down probably um I'm willing to bet that quad jumper number five is also going to die. Um, the question is, does quad jumper five survive before? Although, you know what? It looks like there's going to be no shots against quad jumper number five here. I think two uh, is going to face the brunt of the attack, and I don't know if Hal Runner and Del Miko are enough to get it off the board before it's going to get a chance. Yeah, because it's at full health. Yeah, um, and even if it dies because of the same initiative order, they'll both be able to fire. Yeah, everybody that, turns into Fel Rath, Fel's Wrath once you get into initiative. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, no, they're not the same initiative. What's wrong with me? They're all initiative one. So, yep, yep. no, I'm guessing Mike's going to try to PS kill whatever he can. Yeah, and that's interesting because quad jumper number five, the one that's already damaged is actually doesn't have a shot or do, it doesn't have um, anyone shooting him this turn. Correct, because right? he bumped the only potential shot that could have hit him. Yeah, uh, and the others, well, Howlrunner, we'll see what Howlrunner's doing. Um, but the others all turned south towards number two here. Also, Kath only has, currently, only has one arc on her, it looks like. Or two. Um, two. Yeah, two, perhaps. Um but I think I think he's going to go after the quad jumpers. Uh, it's probably the right move. I would get rid of them and because they're they're weaker, yeah, um, easier to take off the board. I would probably try and take them off and worry about Kath later. Um, Kath took a target lock on number six. Yeah, so he definitely wants to make sure she did that, that, that that. Oh that yeah, number six die. is going to die. He's going to PS kill number six, um, and number quad jumper number two is probably going to die so greg has more experience with this list than i do but i wonder if i'm him if i'm there i take the reinforce token for the red, the red reinforce on kath instead of the target lock because he's well, gonna I get think kath, he's I... gonna get one re-roll and an automatic hit from fearless so mm. his he already kind of has some offensive mods on the the on the range one shot but i guess he thinks but you need to roll five dice right because he gets um kath gets the extra die right Oh, I see what you're saying. He's rolling five he dice wants to range maximize one. His yeah, damage. you're gonna maximize those hits. He's trying to delete that. So that's ooh, nice. Three from Hal Runner onto uh, Quad Jumper Two. Yep, and that is three hits on yep. Quad Jumper Two. So between oh, so you know what? Two might be pulled off the board because he's got two <laughs> arcs on him. Uh, sorry, Mars Mike Beard is asking about a reroll. Uh, who who are you asking about? Mars Mike Beard. Yes, the reason why Mike was able to reroll there is because that was Howl Runner's range one shot, and Howl Runner now in second edition affects herself. She can reroll on her own attacks. Yeah, it's a friendly ship at range zero to one. Yep, yep, it's great. Um, so there's a lot of abilities now in 2.0 that actually affect yourself as well as friends. Okay, so uh, number two, range Del Miko. Well from Del. Yep. And he'll get a reroll on that. That's a, double a hit crit. and Ooh, two crits. That's what you want to see. That's bad news for number two. And which, with... Boom, off the board. Yep. There it is. First blood. Um, sorry, Kath doesn't get a reroll. Kath gets a free extra die. Oh, see, that's um, me not knowing. I'm confusing Boba and Kath's abilities. I thought she got rerolls from her friendlies. She gets an no. extra attack die from yes. friendlies. Okay, no, okay. So, so Kath gets an extra attack die when the target is bumped into a friendly generic ship. Okay. So Kath is going to have five dice against TIE Fighter number six here. So that's why... Because it's range one, yeah. and it's bumped into one of the quad jumpers. So that's why he took the target lock. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the target lock is going to give all those rerolls. Uh, a focus would have also been good. I think focus and target lock are basically the same mathematically, uh, so it doesn't really matter. You get a slightly higher chance of crits off the target yes, lock. Yes, you get a higher chance of crits. That's the only difference. Um... And <clears throat> that's that free hit. Or, or, well, five dice there from Kath into TIE Fighter number six. 
And, and that is the fearless conversion. That wasn't even a... Didn't even spend the target lock. That is... Oh, why do we end up with four? I thought I saw all hits. Well, there you go. Evaporated. I mean, that's what ties do. They explode. Why do you only roll two dice? I don't know. Oh, tractor beam. Oh, there yeah, go. there we go. That's yep. why. <laughs> you know, they, you guys know what's going on. Yep, yep, yep. And that is a whole bunch of crits. Me mega dead. Uh, console fire and... Hull breach. Hull breach. Oh, that's a nice little set of crit crit deck there uh, there I think that was a custom deck someone had put together on Reddit yeah um, he uh, Travis put the uh, graphics into our open yeah he yeah. allowed them to use them which yeah is yeah that's a great uh, great little crit deck and actually very appropriate here because they're TIE fighters and mm -hmm. uh, we see uh, these TIE fighters um, exploding um, so, so one for one so far they're each on the board they've each traded a ship <laughs> um, although uh, Gunrunner number five is damaged and um uh, who do we got shooting here? Um, Black Squadron number four, it looks, looks like. like. it, yep. yeah. It's the activated Three has ship. no shop. Four is uh, going to be shooting Gunrunner number four, so that's Through obstructed. The debris, yeah. The Possibly range, range one, one or two. They would have measured, I think, it's what they were checking. Yeah. yeah. This next turn also gets pretty interesting. Now, I don't think there's a way where Greg can clear stress... And effectively use the tractor array on any one of these ships. So I'm assuming he's probably going to want to use the tugs to block and to bump and to cause yeah. a nightmare. And Kath, because she has that veteran tail gunner, she'll probably just be happy with a rear shot anyways because she's going to hit something at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So how does tail gunner work? When you do a primary forward attack, you can then do a rear I, attack? You got it, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's it's just, it's very situational, but on a, on a fire spray, it makes sense for the points cost, I think, yeah, that it is. Yeah, it's tricky, though. It'll be very rare, I think. I don't necessarily know if it's worth the points. I think it's very rare it feels to really, get someone both in front arc and rear arc. That's true, but, it, but with this medium base and the boost on the fire spray, it happens sometimes more often than you think. Yeah, it's true. Especially when ships are fleeing and running away. And now, if, if, if the fire spray had a barrel roll i think yeah. you could pull it off a lot right um but with a boost i think it's harder um because usually most of the enemy ships are clumped together although it might happen here sometime soon because uh, tie fighter number threes in the uh, are going to be on the other side of the whole swarm right yeah exactly um, so maybe maybe you'll get that double shot i feel like it's a card that's specifically in the game for fire sprays yeah. arc 170s and eventually the tie special forces when, right when it yes. comes out the resistance mm -hmm. although the tie the tie special forces has the title that allows you to do it oh that's right yeah. okay so yeah maybe you're yeah. right i don't know um yeah it'll be interesting to see how uh how those those two conversion um the tie sf and the, or sorry the the first order in general and the resistance in general come working out. Mm -hmm. um, Mike, uh, Mars, Mike Beard, you're 100 percent correct. The only problem you said that you're having with veteran tail gunner is Han exists and costs the same and is much much better. Yeah, and I, I can't deny with you. Yeah, why would you spend? Why would you not take Han Gunner for three points? It's yeah, way better. I think I think most people are agreed that Han Gunner is under costed. He should probably be something like seven or eight points mm -hmm. instead of three mm -hmm. um, because it's that it's it's that sort of thing that everyone hated in first edition which is a free action with very few consequences sure you, you have to take a stress because it's a red focus sure um, but you get to choose when to do it so you get to ch uh, at, at engagement right yeah and anytime you can um, remove also so one of Greg's um, tugs took a uh, stun pilot when you bump something um, <laughs> oh, that you might take be a problem. damage. Yeah, that's gonna be bad. <laughs> um, I think general in general, what they were trying to do with this with this edition is remove any of those options where yeah. Oh, I I blocked you, but you still got a positive benefit from yeah. it. Yeah, there's there's none. Hun of... gunner still you can get blocked and still get a focus. So yep. it's a bit iffy. <clears throat> yeah, so it's definitely worth a lot more points. Yeah, uh, it's it's probably worth seven or eight, yeah. and it'll still be good at that point. Yeah, um, but not an auto include. You'll okay. have to think about it. Yeah, right? agreed. <clears throat> um. Yeah, uh, so so um, it'll be interesting to see what they do um, because apparently um, it came out around the Coruscant tournament in um, uh, where was it? Ooh, all uh, the evades. Where was Coruscant? Where did they do that? Pax uh, yeah. something. Uh, the the, mo the the recent Coruscant tournament um, word came out from the people at FFG that the ch that their plan is to do a points rebalancing. Twice a year. Yep. Right? Except maybe in the case of a, some emergency issue, they might jump in. Ooh, um, 
but in general, twice a year. So we should see one All the probably around um, January. I think that's what they were saying. January yeah. is the first one. Um, so we'll probably see uh, the Han Gunner go up uh, in price at that point. Um, and that should be fine. It, that'll give them time to see what the First Order and Resistance kind of... Yeah, I think um, so. Uh, ...become when, when people start playing with them, because those should be out sometime November, December. No one's quite sure yet. Um, and from there, they'll be able to uh, uh, rejig everything. Uh, <clears throat> and we'll definitely see Han change, I think. That, that's one of those ones that's going to be a definite change. Han, the cost of bombers in general... Uh, th that's going to go up. Uh, trajectory simulator might go up. Um, I think it has to for yeah. sure. I think I punishers think it, will probably get a different price change. I'm, I'm assuming yeah. they'll reprice Duke. I don't know. Um, they'll probably they'll probably try to hit the Phantoms, which I hope they don't. But I'm sure they'll over. Well, what the thing is, if even if they overcorrect one way, they can try to pull it back again mm -hmm. in the next edition. We'll see. Hopefully, I'm I'm more hopeful for small incremental changes that might yeah. maybe take a year to take effect. Like do it in 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 passes, not. Don't try to overcorrect something out of the play game. Yeah, yeah. I, I wish they would do... Um, I, I honestly wish they would do points rebalancing every three months or something like that. Mm. But I, I understand that they don't want to be too disruptive. Too reactionary right? as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we will be streaming the Top Cut as games as well, yes. Yeah, uh, someone asked if we're streaming the Top Cut. Yes, we will be. Uh, so you get six games of X-Wing today. I think we're doing Top 8, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, you will see six games of X-Wing uh, on the VTTV Live channel today. And hopefully you can join us for all six of them. Yeah. Yeah. The interesting thing about the Top Cut, um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know this, is that you know how they have three lists? Right? Yep. They can't repeat the same list? Yeah. yeah. So that's one thing we should yeah. say to the players. So if, you're, if you're watching at home, if you stick with us through mm -hmm. Top Cut, as you, as you may or may not know about our format, is that we encourage players to bring three <laughs> lists to this event, three separate lists. Mm -hmm. And in the Top Cut, you can't repeat your list. So you can't just bring your ace top best list and then play it three rounds in the top cut oh you that's have great to, you have to maybe hold off on saving it in the hopes that you make top cut or whatever it is so you've got to be able to basically prove that you were a real prototype pilot by winning with whatever it is you have on you it's interesting because last year i um uh had a really great stream game well uh, i had one really great stream game and then one really terrible one because last year the rule was actually different it was the opposite um you had to pick one list and stick with it for the top cut yes and i ended up picking um uh one of my lists that i knew was going to be good against my round eight uh my top eight opponent mm -hmm. uh but then my top four opponent ruined me right. because my list was not good against that um his list uh, and that was Tristan Singleton who, who went on to win. The who first went on ever. to win, yeah. yeah. And and that match uh, was streamed my my top four match, and I got just destroyed because um, <laughs> I had played him earlier in the tournament right. and uh, uh, and with that same matchup, and it went poorly. And uh, I tried something different, and it did not work. <laughs> and, uh, so um, you can probably find that match on the VTTV Live archives from last year. Um, but uh, I suggest don't. It's not a good match. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely watch your T70 match. Oh, the T70 season. match was great. That was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, that was um, a really cool list. Uh, uh, which is why I'm super excited, actually, to see what the Thai, um, what the Resistance uh, conversion kit looks like, what all the new pilots look like. Um, <clears throat> Gus so, Triple Eight, how different do the lists have to be in the BTL <clears throat> format? Uh, the only stipulation that you have is you cannot repeat the same named pilot. Mm -hmm. So you can't have three lists with Vader in it. You also can't have a list that has Vader in it and then Vader Crew in it. Like you have, you can't mm. use unique things. Uh, I think you can have Vader Crew on a different list. Oh, right. It's just sorry. pilot cards. Yeah, yeah pilot yeah, cards. Yeah, yeah, you can't reuse those kinds of things. So yeah, you yeah. can't have the same ship in all three. So you can't have three Whisper lists. Yeah. Or three Redline lists. So as long as you have different... Um, uh, different uniques, you are fine. Yeah. Um, you also can't just play four different versions of the exact same storm either. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't um, run four, sorry, three of the exact same amount of ships. You have to, have, something has to be different about yeah, the list. Yeah. Uh, so apparently Greg is running a three different uh, quad jumper focus quad, jump, list. quad jumper list. Yeah. Um, I personally think that I would encourage more variety than that even. Yeah. Um, but, um, but the only rule is you can't have the same named pilot twice um uh so mike for example cannot have hal runner or del mico or valen ruder in any of his other two lists um and as we were saying before that's actually the general rule we use in our league uh so the prototype toronto league um we do uh seasons every couple months and over the course of the season 
Um, uh, over the course of the season, you um, uh, cannot fly the same named pilot twice. Uh, so you're always coming up with new lists. Uh, is a Pio in Nader? I'm not sure. I'm messing that Nader up, so sorry about that. But uh, I do believe you're correct. We should double check to see if. He did uh, take one damage. So Quad okay. Jumper 3 took the. Actually, Greg took the damage yeah, before he, the damage he activated. From the pilot, and then he rolled for the debris. It's not a rock, right? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't yeah. guarantee a second damage. He's yeah. Already took the one so he's already taken the damage, and it's reflective in yeah. the scores to score totals there. But thank you. We encourage you to continually um, check us. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> We're too busy talking and not paying too much attention to the to the game right now. Actually, um, let's talk about what's going on here, right? Um, so there have been all sorts of um, continual uh, what's the word? Gun runners being gun runners and and getting in the way. Um, so it looks like what Greg did is he did a lot of self bumping to keep his ships where they were. He's yeah. trying to cause maximum heartache for Mike. Mm-hmm. I think every single round that Greg can bump a Tie Fighter, it's one less juke he's got to worry about. I think yeah. that's his plan. I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if he self bumps his Cath into the Jakku, sorry, the Gunrunner Four, and just just tries to take another range one shot on him. Yeah, and just, that's what I would do. And um, if he does that, he might actually be able to proc Tail Gunner as well. So we'll see. Maybe oh, it comes into play this game. Ooh, maybe. Yeah. That's going to be close. If he bumps into number four here... I don't think he, he clears. He might... Oh, does he clear? I don't know. Uh, don't, I don't think so. Uh, so we're looking so like either. number five here. Oh, you know what? Doesn't clear, so sits where he is. Yep, sits where he is. Number five is just going to be stuck. It is definitely Boop City indeed, my, my yep. beard. Um, so number three kept his stress, it looks like. Yeah, actually. well... Just hard too. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, TIE Fighter number three just sitting there. I'm surprised he didn't try to clear that stress and just kind of get out of there. Uh, Isaac Card, no, you do not hear Devin commentating. Uh, my name is Mike Reverso. This is Sumit. Sumit, and we will be doing your commentary today. Uh, for most of the day, we might bring in other commentaries. Yeah, we might uh, cycle out to allow our fearless leader to come in for a match or yeah. something like that. But yeah, well, we're trying to be with you as long as long as you can stand us. We'll be here with you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and. Uh, once it comes to the cut, uh, we'll probably invite some players to come join us as well. Maybe talk a little bit about their lists or about how they're feeling uh, about the tournament in general. Um, uh, so, yeah, you might hear from someone other than us. Uh, but for now, you're stuck with, with Samid and I. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. Now we see some k terrain high. So k terrain through the debris. Just uh, Actually, you know what? No, that was his edge. Oh, um, you're right. Good call. So the, the maneuver template clean. didn't actually go through the... Uh, uh, through the debris. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so it definitely looks like J- Gunrunner 1 is going to mm-hmm. feel some love. Ooh, so uh, it looks like uh, Mike actually K turned all of these TIE fighters here. Yeah. Uh, which is actually a brilliant move. Yeah. Pull them away from everything else, get yeah. them out of Arc of Kath. Yeah. Unless Kath is doing a hard two or something unexpectedly, these TIE fighters are going to be um, broadsiding her. Yeah, yeah, uh, and they're going to take Gunrunner number three off the board mm-hmm. easily. Um, and that's also the real power with the Dell, um, Del Miko, and Hellrunner together. Mm-hmm. They're going to really provide a lot of offensive and defensive uh, protection for yeah. the Swarm. That move actually makes me think that um, Mike is, is kind of uh, ahead on this game here. Um, he's going to be stressed, so he doesn't have Juke or anything like that. That's fine. Um, oh, hard two, you called it. Is it a hard two? It is. Oh, wow. Directly okay, well, there the you go. Debris. That is exactly the move um, that Kath needed to make in order to counter this swarm here. And we are going to see the... Does he arc. bump into his gunrunner? I think so. Yeah. Oh, so we are going to see Veteran Tail Gunner take effect here. Yep, if they remember to use it. Good job. Um, really good job, actually, on uh, on Kath's part. Um, again, no, uh, he's not going to have an action... Um, so no focus or anything like that. He's going to get that extra die from... Uh, actually, is he going to get that extra die? Nope. No, no one's bumping into... Actually, uh, TIE Fighter number five in the rear is. Oh, that's right. So you yep. can tail gun to that one and have yep. the extra... Yeah, so he just rolled for his debris, did not take any damage. Yep, so TIE Fighter number five in the rear is going to get that extra die shot. So he's going to take four or five dice uh, from Kath, mm-hmm. while Kath also shoots... Um, Hal Runner, range mm-hmm. one, you can get an, a free hit, right? Mm-hmm. Four dice plus a, a four dice, and one of them becomes a free hit. It's not bad. Not bad at all. That's going to be a, However, an is, average of, what, two and a half hits. He is going to take three range one shots from TIE Fighters as well in return. 
Yes. Which uh, isn't nothing to scoff at, nope. especially considering that they'll all have Hellrunner rerolls. Well, they're gonna they're gonna take out the Gunrunner first. He's already damaged, right? Why why shoot Kath when you can finish off the Gunrunner? Um, that's my my thought. Um, and Kath is the real threat in this list. Yeah, you think? but doing a bunch of damage to him right now. Um, I mean, you always want to take stuff off the board, mm -hmm. right? I make that mistake way too often of splitting my fire. That's uh, actually exactly what I'm saying. It's never a good this idea. This is the mistake that I would make now. I yeah. think in my heart of hearts, I go after Kath, get the half points, and, and dig in. No, I don't know how many range one shots you're gonna have on her. Um, I mean, no, take 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 the gun runner off the board. You'll take the gun runner off probably with with um, how runners one shot. Then the other two can dump into Kath. Uh, or not. Ooh, that is a very unfortunate roll. Just one hit from Howrunner onto... He rolled one extra dice. Well, he rolls one extra dice, so four yeah, dice yeah. is too much. So Tie Fighter oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. just rolling that he just re-rolls. Oh, he just re-rolls. Yeah. And go. got a way better roll. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, sometimes it's okay to make a mistake because you get <laughs> a way better result. Ooh, that must, that must sting a little bit. But that is uh, a hit and two crits into... Gunrunner number three, which takes it off the board. Yeah. Um, and uh, so Altruzine 77 suggests that you especially want to remove ships in a swarm versus swarm game because so few turns will be played. That's Another absolutely good point. true. You're right. As you, you can see, kill... we're already 23 minutes into the game. Sorry, uh, 23 minutes left. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good point. <clears throat> Although the turns tend to go faster um, as you go pretty quickly as those ships disappear. So Gunrunner number three, gone. So, so as we saw yesterday on stream, we saw the 2.0 uh, Kiss of Death. It was a fuel leak into a direct hit, which oh, no. if the fuel leak comes down first, that triggers off of the next crit. Oh, no. You get the damage from that, crit. and then direct hit gives you another hit. So that's a four damage swing. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's why Greg put all the cards in the dice tray to show you <laughs> that that gun runner was turbo dead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exploded real good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and now we get two range one shots into Kath. Um, although, does Kath not get to shoot right now? Uh, Dell is, uh, I think, also four. Mike's got initiative. Yeah. yeah, Mike's got initiative. Or so player Del's, order, whatever they call it in this version. Yeah, uh, Dell's going to take a shot against uh, Kath. Three dice, range one. Uh, that's two hits. Hold on, reroll. Three hits. There we go. Uh, perfect. Actually, before Howrunner's reroll, mm -hmm. um, Kath could have triggered L3, right? And I don't know if he wants to do it now or when. Um, right. But he wouldn't be able to do it after Howrunner's free reroll. And I hope that they pay attention to that um, because uh, Defender modifies first, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if you use cast ability to modify, to force a reroll, mm -hmm. you uh, it's or sorry, not cast ability, um, L3's ability, uh, it's reroll all dice, right? Um, Hal Runner won't be able to trigger after that because the dice have already re been rerolled, right? Right. Uh, Kath shooting back at somebody, not sure. Who. Uh, he picked uh, tie number four. Tie four. Uh, look, elected to try to kill a ship that hadn't fired yet. Yeah. So just two hits is what he got. And that is no evades. So, had, so he gotten, had he gotten one more damage, it would have been enough to get it. Not enough, though. Tie number four, I think, takes two hits. Yeah. And now, if he's smart, he's going to proc veteran tail gunner. Defender yes. modifies first. Yes, uh, Warpigs86 says defender modifies first. So the way, it, the way it works is whoever rolls the dice modifies last, right? So if I attack... Uh, so attacker rolls dice, defender modifies, attacker modifies. Then defender rolls dice, and attacker modifies, then defender modifies. So whoever rolled the dice modifies last. That's veteran tail gunner shot uh, out the rear, I think at tie number five. We ended up with, I'm not entirely sure, he covered his hand. Three, Three hits. Three hits, and we roll... Triple evades, it looks like. Triple evades. Uh, actually, is that a focus? Oh, two evades. One gets through. <laughs> okay, so one damage gets through on TIE Fighter number five. That's fine. He's still got uh, Howrunner, Del Mico, Valen, all in perfect health. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what's what's Valen Rudor's ability? Can we bring that up? I haven't... Something uh, about a focus with an enemy. I don't know. I'll try to see if I can get it to Yeah, it. I'm trying to remember what that one is. Could you bring up... After friendly ship at range 0 to 1 defense. After damage is resolved, if any, Which you may are... perform an action. Valen Rudor. Valen Rudor. Oh, he gets a free action after a friendly ship... At range 0 to 1. Defense is... if it takes damage? After oh, damage no. is recorded. Oh, no, just so, after defense. Yeah, yeah okay. <clears throat> That's actually great, including himself. Yeah. 
Oh, which means he can get his juke back up before. Yeah, yeah, that's so actually attack, he which could is spend also the evade, and then juke or mm-hmm. oh, actually no, he would have already evaded. Which is I'm, I'm assuming what uh, Greg was thinking and why he decided to not attack Valen. Hmm. Well, no, Valen's stressed, so it wouldn't have done anything. Oh, you're right, moment. exactly that. True. Uh, it looks like two hits from another Tie Fighter into no, from a Gun Runner into a Tie Fighter. Yeah, from number four into number five. No, number five into number. Oh, four. number five into number four. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I've got the. And now number four is attacking. Kath. Uh, Lord of Britannia, uh, Mike uh, Kazanik has the initiative. And that looks like a hit crit. Out on a reroll. Uh, yeah. So. so oh. Number four is shooting Kath. He's using L three thirty seven. Ah, yeah. there you go. Oh, looks like we've got two images there. So he's using L3 to force all three rerolls. That's still, still two, hits, two hits. And Howl Runner can't trigger now because the dice have already been rerolled. And Greg's just for <laughs> confirming all that stuff. Yeah. And now Kath rerolls. And unfortunately... Ooh, two blanks. That's still two hits into Kath. Yes. That being said, uh, shields are down, but Kath is still not damaged, I don't think. Um, which means Del Mico's ability still doesn't trigger with Kath's attacks. Now, can you flip L3 back up again, or is that nope, a one-time it, use? it's a one-time use. She dies and then gets integrated into the ship. Mm. Spoilers. Yep. Um, she, uh, Victor here has not seen Solo. Um, <laughs> spoilers, L3 dies. I apologize for that. Um, Peculiar language that C-3PO noticed when he was on the Falcon. Yeah, that's exactly it, right? So they go to explain the, uh, the weird um, things about the Falcon. Um, cool. So, who's shooting here? Quad jumper? No, TIE Fighter number two into... Nope, it's a quad jumper into one of the TIE Fighters here, into Del Mico, I think, who evades it handily. That's the thing, right? TIE Fighters with three evade playing in the debris clouds actually Mm -hmm. not really hurting Mike. It's very difficult to hit a TIE Fighter, especially Mm -hmm. with only two attack dice. Mike's in a weird space this turn because uh, coming up because his entire list is stressed. Yes. Um, He can't turn around. Uh, so I think he's got to dive after quad jumper number five. Problem is, I think what Kath is going to do is just go like three forward. Yeah, clear the stress right? and just pound somebody out the rear. Yeah, rear arc. That that's what I would do. Um, three forward or a bank. Um, right, and Kath's dial. Uh, so now so that now she can clear stress on three banks. Yeah. So PT one hundred six says um, uh, once L three is used, it open opens up Kath's dial. Um, to clear stress. That's right. Uh, L337's alternate side, after you use it the once, is decrease the difficulty of all your bank maneuvers. Um, it's a good card. It's a really good card, um, I think. Um, it's very similar to Nyen Nub, which mm-hmm. does the same thing, I think. Um, but uh, uh, but you also get that one time, one time force the attacker to reroll all dice. Um, one little get out of jail free card. Um, so that would make uh, the turns blue as well, then the hard turns. Uh, the banks, I think it is that you. Oh, just it's, banks, it's just effects. banks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think Kath is going to. Hmm. What I would do with Kath is. I still think you just want the straightforward. No, but uh, that would bump into Hal Runner. Um, oh, because so he's gonna operate, yeah, he's gonna activate first. What I would do is a three bank towards the uh, towards Mike's edge of the board here. Yeah. So upward. Uh, yeah, upward. Um, because downward would run into Hal Runner. Mm-hmm. I think three bank that way will pass wherever to wherever Del Mico is going. I see. That still what puts the rear arc. And then arc you've got the something. rear arc, and then you can trigger Marauder, and uh, you don't get Fearless at that point because Fearless is only front arc. Um, but still, uh, that probably a good idea. It's the other two tugboats that are kind of in a in a bad way right now, I think. Yeah, those two tugboats are not long for this world, I don't think. Um, I was really worried about Mike at the start of this game, but I'm feeling like it's going his way. Um, it's really hard to tell. He has only lost one TIE fighter. Uh, yeah, he's only lost one. Uh, there are two kind of hanging on by a thread here. Mm-hmm. Um, but his aces are still at full health. Uh, Mars Mike Beard says that he thinks both tugs are going to try, try and turn towards Valen, try and mess up his day. So that's of, quite the possibility here. Now, Space Tug 4 is actually pointed up board, not down board. So oh, that's true. Yeah. The only way he could do that would be a, an S loop, which would be through debris, which would be double stressed. Now, don't forget or that. It could, re- it could um, reverse. Yeah, don't forget that these guys have the reverse option. 
Um, and uh, so I could see I could see number four actually doing the one bank reverse, mm -hmm. um, just to keep pointing at number five, uh, Tie Fighter number five, um, and to be in a place that he might be blocking. Tie fighters could number four. If he does that, if number if space tug four can fit the back the bank one uh, reverse, that would actually free up potentially the two sloop. A one turn from left. Number five as well. Um, yeah, is the one turn on a tugboat? Um, I can't imagine it's white. I would imagine that'd be red. I might be wrong though. I don't know much about them. Well, we're about to find out because Greg's activating number four. It's white. Oh, okay, great. Then, yeah, that is definitely the call, and you called it perfectly. Yeah. You called it perfectly, Pilator. Right. Hard one. There we go. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quad jumper is the best ship in X-Wing. All right, we see the theme forming. <laughs> I don't know if it's the best, but it's definitely fun. Um, so he's going to barrel roll it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Forcing it to go through the debris again. <clears throat> So unless Mike did something to clear stress with that with that Tie Fighter, it's going to be double stressed. Yep. Again. Well, he probably was clearing the stress because he has that stress token already, right? Yeah. So, he's, but he's still going to end up stressed because he yeah. clear one, get another one. Um, they do the which two sloop. sucks. Uh, I think there it is. Yeah, two sloop. The beautiful Jakku Gunrunner. Great art on that one. Actually. Yeah. Well, I like everything about the Quad Jumpers. This is a cool little ship. Cool little ship. <laughs> a, I love the model. It's solid. It feels chunky. Yeah. Oh, he did not do the... Um, did not do a sloop there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, someone mentioned that the Gunrunners were going to go after Valen, and there they are. Um, this leaves TIE Fighter number five, though, to come in behind them. I uh, wonder what he's doing, if he's just doing a one straight or something like that. Um <clears throat> My guess still with Kath is the three bank towards Mike's side of the board. And he's fine on his debris move. Oh, right. No one straight on ties. What am I thinking? Mm -hmm. uh, Valen made a roll because he went over the debris. Uh, Lord of Britannia, when you go over debris, uh, if you roll, uh, you roll an attack die, and if you roll a crit, you take a crit. Yeah. Um, and uh, which can make debris really volatile. Um, unlike asteroids, though, where if you roll a hit or a crit, you take... Uh, that damage. So you take a crit yep. on asteroids? You take asteroid? a crit on asteroids. Yeah, yep. you do take crit on asteroids. Nothing worse um, than taking a direct hit when you have two life left on an asteroid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, hey, that's what it's there for. I think Mike's going to try to kill box Kath. Oh, interesting. Blocker, bumper, yeah. do whatever he can and kill boxer. Oh, did, where did Kath go? Is Kath doing a three? Wait, what no, are we doing? That's, that's not moving yet. It's uh, this one. That's oh, last that was checking fighter. number yeah. four. Okay. Yeah. That's TIE Fighter 4. Correct, Lord of Britannia, the Jakku Gunrunner tractor beamed uh, Valen Rudor to go directly over top of the debris, so then when Valen Rudor activated, he flew over the debris. Yep. Cleared distress, gained distress, and had to roll for the attack. What is going on here? What are they checking? Oh, we're they're trying to move. The, yeah, we're laying down to make sure that it bumps properly. Yeah, trying to move number four. That's an interesting choice. Why, why would you go and bump Kath here? Well, I guess, yeah, you can't K-turn, so all you can do is move to clear stress and hope for the best. Um... And actually, if he laid his options outright, he might be able to. I think he's like I said. I think he's trying to gum up the works, mm. blocker keeper in place, and get a couple of another range one shots on her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's still works in your favor. You have Hellrunner. You have if she's damaged, you have defensive rerolls now thanks to Delmico. I think that maybe is what he's going for. You might try to. You probably will see a bump from everybody. Yeah, I'm. I'm still thinking that uh, Kath is doing the three bank. That is my guess. To ship left. Yeah, yeah, that'd a three, be a great a choice. A three bank here would actually be fantastic yes. because it looks like the other Tie Fighters are just getting out of the way. Yes, and um, Mike didn't even try to block it. Um, uh, Lord of Britain is asking if obstacles still work in, uh, the same as they did in 1.0. Yes, exactly the same. Yeah, ostensibly, uh, they're the same thing. They've cleaned up some of the language or solidified some of the stuff a little bit more, but yeah, yeah. they work the same way they did in 1.0. Yeah, exactly the same way. Um, so. Uh, Debris, when you go over it, you get a stress and you have the potential of taking a crit. As Asteroids. You, as you clarified earlier in the game, as you move through it. As you move through it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Asteroids, when you go over, um, uh, when you land on them uh, or move through them, uh, you lose your action round that turn, your action phase. And um, 
So there you go, just like you called it. We went with the two, two instead of the three. Two bank, there we go. Which, yeah, he didn't need to go any more than that. Yeah. That's perfect. I would have done the three to avoid being blocked, but um, the uh, two bank deep. is perfect. The three that is looks exactly like he's, where Kath wants to be. I think the three would have put him on the debris cloud there. Uh, Lord of Britannia says, uh, so if ship lands on an asteroid, it loses the attack. Yes, if you're on an asteroid, you cannot attack. Correct. Um, so debris, uh, you can attack if you're sitting on it. Um, you get a stress and a chance of taking a rock, uh, taking a crit. Yeah. Uh, if you're on a rock, you don't get a stress, but you lose your action phase. Yeah. And you have a chance of getting a um, uh, uh, hit or a crit. Um, so so looks like Hellrunner bumped there, bumped her own ship, I think, or uh, no? No, it looks like Hellrunner doesn't fit. Uh, Hellrunner okay, bumps I was thinking Kath. that would have been the time for him Oof. to be able to delete Hellrunner. That's actually a much better place to be. So it's actually better. Hellrunner bumped into Kath. It's better for Mike, yeah. Yeah, so Kath doesn't get a chance to shoot Hellrunner. Exactly. Um, and it looks like Mike didn't even try to go after Kath this turn. I guess number five is pointing in that direction, but two and four, so Delmico and the Black Squadron Ace, are pointing after the gun runners. Mm -hmm. uh, those gun runners are going to take a bunch of hits this turn. I think maybe he'll be able to take one off the board. So Kath but, into Del. Yep, Kath. One. Why is Hellrunner not taking a shot? Does he not? She have has no works on anything. No. Hmm. Uh, no, this must be. Sorry. Oh, this, that was sorry. That was Hellrunner taking okay. a shot. Yep. Yeah, three bank would have been better. From uh, Mars, Mike Beard says, uh, absolutely. That would have given the space and. Uh, Kath would have had that shot against Hellrunner this turn. Uh, Pioinator says quads are definitely getting a points booth, a boost, I assume is what you mean. Um, yeah, you think they're too cheap? They might be a couple points too cheap, I think. Ooh, two hits, <clears throat> deciding whether or not to spend focus. This is five dice out the rear. Yeah. And fearlessness only procs in the front arc. So yeah. Things will... Yep. So he's re-rolling using Marauder. That's two hits and a crit. And then you spend focus. No, he's going to hold on to focus for his defensive because he wants to maintain points. And that's a crit. Spend no evade oh. token to spend. And no free re-roll on defense because Kath is not damaged. Exactly. So shielding does not count as damage. It's damage cards. Yeah, you have to have at least one damage card to be damaged. And it looks like a direct. Direct, yeah. Into number... All right, another ship off the board. Yep, there we go. Which puts Mike, uh, which puts Greg up on points now too. So if his quads can get out of this game without dying, well, no, I think right now you'll see Mike will end up swinging it. Where he'll be pulling half points at least on both those jacuzzi on this round, if not outright deleting them. Yep. Oh wait, he might not have very many shots on them though. So Valen Ruder is trying to see if he gets a shot. He might have that range three shot on Kath. You might have to proxy out that ship to get that. Uh, to check no, that it arc. looks like he does. Okay, they're going to proxy it out just to be just to be sure. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe they've called it okay. So, so this be the range one shot, I think, on the Cath. Yeah, ra no, range five. Uh, Tie fighter five onto Cath. That looks like a range. Oh, range two. two sorry, yeah. I forgot. Tie fighter two is pointing the opposite direction. With the with arcs on every single corner of the base chit now it's a little bit complicated <clears> to <throat> tell which one it is because you can't really <clears throat> see the green coloration from this far it's a little difficult yeah, yeah that's all right we'll get used to it as time goes on uh and so one roll. hit okay. from no free reroll nope uh that's a whole bunch of evades there's a juke but it doesn't matter yep. so we are fine uh mars mike beard is asking if quad should be equal to a wings at 30 points what do you think i think a wings are better than quad jumpers but that that space tug tractor array ability is really good it is i mean the quadrumper though you only literally use for its ability like it's only got two attack dice it's not like it but then again so does an a-wing a-wing's a blocker but a-wing loves to sit in close and activate range threes yeah i don't, I don't know. know it's hard to say i don't know if they're like under costed they're, they are incredibly cheap but mm -hmm. they're also incredibly easy to kill i don't know i mean tractor beams are really powerful so it's hard to say Oof. i think valen ruder just took a damage yeah two, uh, damage. two damage two damage that's um, what he wants to see. Greg's been pulling his dice out of the tray really quickly, so it's a little tr uh, tricky to see. Um, but uh, one gun Ooh, runner... Oh, a crit. Oof. Blind pilot. Blinded. That is bad news for Valen Rudor. Um, blinded pilot, actually, blinded pilot's a little interesting here. It says you cannot modify dice except for um, using force tokens. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, you cannot modify your dice. That being said, juke still works. Oh, does it? Well, because you're not modifying you're your not dice. You're not modifying, modifying your opponent's their dice. dice. Okay, that's interesting. Right? So um, if you roll two hits, you're still okay? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, and uh, it's an action to repair it, which sucks. Yep. Because now you um, can't generate an evade token for your juke. Although and that's one really nice thing about the uh, new damage deck. I mean, a lot of the crits are a bit more punishing. Mm -hmm. um, but they are... Um, a lot of the crits are a bit more punishing, but... Uh, they're all repairable. There's no more roll to repair. Yes. Um, Lord of Britannia is asking how we can get those damage decks. If you're referring to the graphics that we're using, um, that was a damage deck that someone put together themselves on Reddit uh, and posted on Reddit, I think. Um, I'm not sure where to find it, but we've been using the images... Um, with permission. With permission for our stream. Uh, any idea where to find that, Victor? No Maybe idea? Maybe that's us, Travis. Yeah, uh, we could find out for you. Um, uh, we could totally find out for you. Um, but uh, I'm betting if you went onto Reddit and looked TIE Fighter Damage Deck, you'd probably find it uh, onto the X-Wing TMG subreddit there. So Kabui is saying that if TIE Fighters at 23 are the benchmark for points cost in this game, then the Gunrunners are undercosted at 28. Hmm, interesting. Well, okay, so here's the thing. You're getting two extra hull, mm -hmm. right? But and the tractor beam ability. And the tractor beam ability, but you're also losing one agility. Yeah. And you have ostensibly a worse style? I don't know. Is it better or Hard worse Hard one style? tractor beam seems pretty strong. Yeah, that does seem pretty strong. Hard Which one I think we're going to see at this turn. Yeah. Or a hard two tractor beam. Um, it's hard to say. Mike maybe, Beard, maybe. I love A-Wings I, I love too. I don't normally fly them, but I never mind. See, again, anytime you're going to show me an original trilogy alphabet list, I'm, gonna yeah. be, I'm happy to see it on the board. So whatever gets more of them on there, I love flying against A-Wings. They're fast. They're a beautiful looking ship. So I'm happy with seeing them on the board too. So if that if I think we just need more A wing pilots. Yeah, yeah. And I think Tycho's happen. got to come back. I yeah, think, we I think we're going to awesome see. Uh, I think in the A wing expansion, we're going to see Tycho and Hera. I would love for that pilots. to happen. Love uh, for whether that or not happen. she's going to have the same ability she does. Um, uh, so uh, tractor beam disrupts formations of lower defense dice. Yes, absolutely. The tractor oh. beam is probably makes up for more than makes up for. The, the lack, lack of evade. The I lack so. of evade. And also remember, it has a reverse. It has the sloop. Both yeah. are two things the TIE fighter doesn't have. Do you, I mean, you guys are all making very valid points. So maybe the cod jumper should be 30-32, something like that. We'll see. Uh, Mars Mike Beard is saying, XABY is love. Um, uh, they were talking here in the chat about um, a uh, alphabet list, as it were. Uh, so apparently... Um, I saw a while ago that the the Star Wars has announced some new novel called The Alphabet Squadron. Oh, about really? A, about a squadron that's running an X wing, an A wing, a B wing, a Y wing, and a U wing, right? Uh, and I was like, huh? Can you actually fit that on a list? Turns out you can. Nice. Right? You absolutely can. Um, not many upgrades on them, but it's enough to fit a turret on the Y wing and a tack officer on the U wing and a few other things. I think. Um, so uh, I would. I, I'm actually thinking of trying that list at some point. It sounds like something um, you would fly. Five five different ships, all doing just random uh, random stuff. <clears throat> all right. So. Uh, we're on so some... the it, I totally did not expect those three bank wides to clear stress. I mm -hmm. I thought Greg we be wanting to leverage the the put some more pressure on Valen. The fact that he's down one damage <clears throat> and tractor beam him and make more dam make more problems for him. But I guess maybe he's just trying to preserve his ships, mm -hmm. get them back in there. He knows he's winning, <clears throat> and that makes more sense to me. He knows it's the last round. Oh, so this again, will be the last round of the game. They've only got two two and a half minutes left. Yeah. So so he's doing what he thinks is the best way to keep himself from 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 losing this match. I think Mike can win though. Um, I think Mike can easily win here. Uh, the Gunrunners are away. They've run, right? Mm -hmm. And the TIE Fighters are just all turning towards Kath. Well, right? I don't think there's a way that TIE Fighter 2 can do anything against Kath. And Hal Runner would have to K-turn, which she can't do if uh, Thing 5 goes forward. So actually, I don't know. I think this might be an interesting turn. No, to see what Mike no, does. no, no. What's the K-turn on a TIE Fighter? F I think it's 3 and 5 or 4 and 5. I so you 5K that. with Hal Runner. Um, Maybe he doesn't have a five. I think only the bomber has the five. I think it's a four on a tie fighter. Uh, who in the chat knows? If you if you know in the chat, oh wait, do we have a dial coming up here? Right, we're gonna get a tie fighter dial. Right. It's hilarious. I'm predominantly an imperial player, but I never really. Yeah, I'm fighters. trying to remember if it's a five k. Uh, it has the oh, it has the four, the, has the four and the three. Has the four and the three. Okay, so you four k with Howl Runner, um, and I think that'd be fine. Right. Action. And, and in fact, you go you go Sorry. you go two or three forward with number five. Right. Because why not? Mm. Right? Just zoom it forward. Um, 
Uh, although number five, it does only have two health left. So maybe you don't want to be that close to Kath. Who um, can just go one forward and just plink. Yeah, if we're talking about uh, Pish, uh, uh, sorry, uh, action. Action Baturd. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so action there is, uh, is saying that if we're talking about under costed ships, talk about the TIE bomber. Yeah. Yeah, nobody sure. nobody disagrees with we you there. We do not disagree. That's the dumb. most under costed ship is clearly the TIE bomber. Yeah. Um, it needs to come up and... Uh, <clears throat> so That's also a good point. Mike, uh, Mike Beard's pointing out that uh, the reason why the TIE bomber feels under costed is because barrage rockets... Uh, on them makes them usable. So without well, barrage rockets, they're unusable. Well, I don't know if that's rate. entirely true, right? Um, they are still so much hull uh, that you can do pretty well with them, right? Like mm-hmm. a whole bunch of bombers and, I don't know, Hal Runner in there. Um, you've got the same sort of effect that you have here with the TIE Fighters. Which is the old 1.0 beefcake swarm, as I think yeah, they used to call it. Yeah, um, Oh, the talent roll! There yeah, baby, new to 2.0. On the uh, oh no, that is not how you do a talent roll. It's hash mark to hash mark. Um, They need to be careful. Oh, is it now? Yes. Yeah. So it's not like a barrel roll. You can. It's not to the front or the back. It's to the hashes. Um, So this is something tricky with the new medium ships. Um, When you do a barrel roll or a talent roll, Mm -hmm. uh, it's the hash mark that has to be at the front or back or middle of the template. Oh, interesting. Okay, right? okay. So you only have a little a bit very of very minute on. amount of wiggle. Yeah, it's not all the way to the front or all the way to the back. Okay. Now, uh, on a small base ship, that's effectively all the way to the front. Well, not even all the way to the front. Okay. Um, uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, so it's that, it's that hash mark. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting, though. Because of the talent roll, he's put himself in the position to potentially lose this game, though. Uh, if he had just had a three-bank boost, he would have been out of there. and would have been no problems. With the with the fire spray, uh, so now uh, he's gonna face two shot, three shots potentially, but two for sure. And how runners about a giant fade <laughs> giant of a token. That, that thing's great. Um, so we've got some folks in the chat here talking about the uh, bombers with barrage rockets. Um, I think I think it's a combination of things. Barrage rockets are a little underpriced. Bombers are a little underpriced, right? Um, I think they won't be. Um, so. Uh, so Howard reroll will come in. So difficult. That's two hits. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there we go. Two hits from Hellrunner into Kath, yeah. who is rolling two dice. Duke and one takes one. <clears throat> that's one hit into Kath. Kath is now damaged. Yep. Um, although, unfortunately, Del Mico is too far away to make that useful. Um, also, <clears throat> Kath is also not at half points yet. Yeah, Kath has taken one. Yeah, so he needed to get three into that. Maybe that's why. Did Kath grade. not take a damage? He did. Take one. Oh, there it is. Okay, great. Um, cool. And... Uh, oh, is there arc there? <laughs> Delmico has a shot on one of those two. Ooh, he only needs one damage through. To get another half points on, on the small ships. I'm liking the small ships um, being... Uh, taking half points as well. There's no more point fortressing with a small ship. You're at half if you have to, don't you have to exceed hull capacity to get half points? Nope, no, no, no. As soon as meet you're at half. Okay. Yeah, meet or exceed half. Um, Dell's range is one to two. Oh, hmm. It doesn't matter. Mike won on that round. He won when he did damage to Kath. He got half points on her with that one hit. Yeah, well, not necessarily because Kath could still kill um, number five, which is another 30 points, right? Don't shoot Hellrunner, shoot, uh, yeah, shoot number five, take him off the board, or at least get half points. Well, half points is not enough. You want to kill him. Is that, that's, ex- yeah, that's number five, so that's 15, well, yeah, 15. Points-wise, the only choice here is to take one off the board, right? If yeah. you can kill number five. He wins by six points. Uh, he wins by six points, although, um, who hasn't shot yet? Number three and number five, right? Yeah, those two, Valen and the Black Squadron Ace, can't kill Kath. No, Valen, right? uh, that number five, uh, yeah. TIE Fighter Fight doesn't have a shot. So two hits. Two hits. Just gotta hope he whiffs. And if he whiffs... He's alive. Yeah. He survives, he takes one hit. Yeah. Which is enough to win Mike uh, Mike Kaznick the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not by much, though. It was pretty tight. Um and uh, looks like uh, 
just a great game overall by these guys. Uh, it looks like they're doing the last few shots just uh, as a little perfunctory kind of measure here. I don't think um, there's anything they can do to actually change the um, outcome, yeah, no, change the outcome here. Uh, so that's it. It's 100 to 91 for Mike Kaznick. And Mike is, uh, well, sorry, this is just round four of the Swiss. Yep. Um, so we might see Mike again later on in the top cut. Who knows? We might see Greg in the top yep. cut, uh, depending on how well he does for the rest of the rest of the tournament.